being SBS, that's what we do. Um, Feng and Jasmine, what do you think about the idea of same-sex marriage? Um, both of us actually growing a traditional Chinese background family. Um, we have our dad and mom. They play, they play different roles in the family. So in, among the moms, ladies, like auntie, anyone from uh, extended family, when I look at through them, I can't find any characters which is from my dad. I can't find that characters from those uh, ladies, including my mom. So how do you feel, though, when you hear Ben and Nam describe their love for one another? Marriage is not a, just only about love, because in traditional Chinese, we have families come together. It's a traditional marriage for okay. us. Okay. Can I get some other views? Who, who else? Sayed. Cool. Firstly, you grew up in a Catholic Lebanese background. Originally, it was uh, same-sex marriage is wrong when I was really young. My dad's very, uh, very old school. Uh, then it was kind of going through school, it was like, yeah, what's, what's the big deal? And then coming into the faith, uh, I came to understand that there are reasons why it is the way it is. Mm. OK, Jenny, what about you up the back? For me, I com am completely for same-sex marriage. I think... Um, I, I find it embarrassing as well. I think that Australia hasn't yet uh, legalised it and it's a matter of equality and discrimination. Um, and especially hearing Nam and Ben tell their story. And I think, yeah, as Penny Wong said, it's the responsibility of governments to at least uh, show leadership um, and, and set the standard. Um, Farshid, what about you? Now, you've got an Iranian background. Yes, I do actually, um, yes. You've been here for 18 years. Um, what do you think? Uh, maybe 18 years ago, if you talk about it, I was really against it, actually, or just um, not really happy with it. But over time, just there's something, if you're just accepting them in the society, they should have rights. Mm. Sigant, you're also from Iran. Just, just before we move off Iran, what's, what's your view? Because in Iran, homosexuality is illegal. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'm, just, I'm just interested in what your views yeah, are living com here. It's completely illegal. And uh, even we cannot talk about that, you know. But uh, in my idea, no. Uh, I think it's OK. Mm. OK. Someone else had their hand up over here. Yes, down the front. Yep. Um, well, I think it should be limited to a man and woman, because you could very easily say, well, man and man, woman and woman. Um, I've read once that people are actually trying to, I don't know what it's called, but get married to nature in some way. I don't know how that works. Um, but I believe that um, marriage should be between a man and woman for the child in particular. Penny, I wanted to ask you, you know, given that some of these attitudes are very deeply embedded in culture and tradition, mm -hmm. is changing one law going to make any real difference to that? Well, uh, <laughs> I don't necessarily want to change your mind. Um, if you have those views, I think I disagree with them and I think they're illogical, but you're entitled to have them. Um, I think the question is what the secular state decides is legal. The question whether or not the views of a, a particular group or a particular religion has the right to impose those views on the, on the secular state and on the whole of the population and to say, because I have these views, this particular group should not have the same rights. Let's substitute same-sex for interracial or people of different age. Uh, there is no one in this country with... Well, there might be some <laughs> still, <laughs> but there is almost no one in this country who would stand up and say that should be banned. Uh, there was a time where uh, marriage between my parents uh, or black and white was considered so appalling the secular state said we would ban it. Monsignor John Woods, the secular state. Why shouldn't the secular state legislate on this? I think sometimes the church has been portrayed as trying to impose a particular view on the wider constituency, if I could put it that way. However, the church's understanding of marriage in the first instance affirms, or at least it would claim to speak into the public forum, to affirm that which accords with nature, fact, and the good of society, in other words, the common good. As to the church... Hang on, hang on, hang on. Before mm -hmm. you leave that, according with nature, mm -hmm. what do you mean by that okay. exactly? Well, in a simple summary way, marriage is unitive of a couple 
and open to the, nurture, the begetting and nurturing of children. In other words, unitive and procreative. The procreative aspect of marriage requires not sameness, but difference, or in other words, complementarity. But and a lot of marriages don't procreate. They a lot don't. of heterosexual marriages don't procreate. True. And your point? Does that make them in some way illegitimate marriages? No, but surely every marriage that is of a uh, heterosexual couple, constituent of that is the giving and receiving of consent and the consummation of that marriage in a genital sexual act. Can I say Yes. That? Father, with all, with all due, due respect, um, homosexuality and same-sex orientation is part of nature and 3% to 5% of any population in the entire planet is same-sex attracted. So it's part of God's design, if you like. It's part of how nature operates. So to say that it's um, somehow out of nature, that is unfair and unreasonable. And I worry that people like yourselves um, really have a deeper agenda theologically when you, and you encase it in these other words of nature and complementarity, when you actually really believe theologically at the end of the day that my husband and I, as, as a disordered relationship, we are going against God's design and um, inherently homosexual orientation is something that needs to be repaired. Now, okay, can I get a response sure. to that? Yeah. Uh, firstly, as to uh, being of nature, scientifically there is no scientific proof that it's genetic, nurture or a combination... Or, sorry, the debate is ongoing as to the genesis of homosexual attraction. Well, that's, that's uh, with all due respect, that's a little bit silly. All through human history, there has been same-sex attraction. People have not... It's about cultural language, and only in the last couple of generations have we been allowed to even talk about our relationships and to form our own families. And there's a new language around that that Australian culture is evolving with. I am a marriage celebrant, and I'm at the coalface doing 100 weddings a year, and I'm there on this day, and marriage is important because it's the one day that in our country, whatever nationality background we come from is irrelevant, we all come together, celebrate and affirm two people and their family who then set boundaries and are given support for what is probably the hardest commitment we can make in modern life. What I'm questioning is, should marriage be afforded to people of homosexual orientation? Or is there something that should be distinctive of marriage that whatever respect and dignity is afforded to people of homosexual orientation, for that status and dignity to be realised, does it require the status of marriage? Okay, Bearing in Penny, mind... can I get a response? Well, well, I just I find it, with, with respect, um, uh, what, what should I call you? Monsignor. Monsignor. John. <laughs> John's fine. Monsignor. Um, I, I think it's interesting you use words like respect at the same time as having an, uh, a, a discussion about whether or not that homosexuality is in fact natural or by implication, uh, you know, a result of some form of disorder. I don't think that's particularly respectful. Be ben, you're Catholic. I mean, how do, how do you feel listening to this? It was very hard because I, part of me coming to terms with my sexuality was to choose between my loves, my faith, my family, my community. They were the foundations that gave me or engage my values. But all of a sudden, um, I'm told you're intrinsically disordered, you're objectively, you're objectively disordered, you're intrinsically evil. I, I had to struggle a lot with that and... How, um, is that, how has that impacted on you and your other Catholic friends as well? So, when I, when I, when I came to terms with my sexuality, um, I... I asked myself, where do I go from here? Because um, I, I, I did contemplate suicide because I'm thinking there's this thing that cannot be speak about of that is so, so taboo within my culture. And then this faith that I love so deeply and have this deep engagement of a journey with also tells me that, you know, you, you, suddenly you're no longer loved and then I, I, I jumped jump into it and I was blessed to have wonderful priests, pastors and, and sisters who were theologically whole and sound who was there to journey with me and, and say that 
well, basically, when I told, when I, one of the things that I do was when I came to them, I, I said that I have some, a, a very big secret I need to tell you. And then the moment I tell them, the, the reaction is always, okay, um, and? <laughs> and um, <laughs> Mm -hmm. Okay, there are Frank, no you're sitting here. You're sitting here listening to this, Father mm. Frank Brennan. Now you've shifted ground on same-sex marriage as a Catholic priest. Where do you sit? Yes, I'm a Catholic priest, but I'm also a human rights lawyer. I'm a citizen of a pluralistic democratic society. I'm so grateful that we now live in a society where Ben and Nam can now come tonight and speak as they have. Mm. But I'm ashamed. Albeit with great difficulty. Well, I'm ashamed that I live in a society where it's still. It requires courage to do it. So, you know, let's hope, and I pray to God, that we will get to be a society where that sort of courage will no longer be required. So what's your position on same-sex marriage? My position is I have been strongly in favour of civil unions. I've had issues about children, which we can come to, but where I think there's going to be change and I simply accept it, is with the recent decisions of the US Supreme Court and the recent legislation in the United Kingdom, there is obviously a need in a society like Australia to give recognition to civil same-sex marriages which are now contracted in Canada, the United States, in New Zealand and the United Kingdom. And to call them marriages, for them to they, be marriages, they, secular they are, marriages. They're married. I mean, you've been married in Canada you've got to be recognised civilly as being married here. Now, Penny, I know that you're a practising Christian with the Uniting Church. I mean, how do you reconcile your position on this with your membership of that church? That's a very personal question. <laughs> and I'm not sure I'd um, necessarily want to share it on national television. <laughs> Has it been a struggle? Um, no, I don't, I don't think so. Uh, but that's probably the church I'm, I'm a member of. Although I attend less regularly than I should, I have to say sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I'm interested because I know, you know, Ben is struggling yeah. with faith. And no, I, I was. You were struggling was, with yeah. faith in this question, yeah. yes. That, that for me, I, I think I have seen uh, people um, like Ben and, and others for whom their faith has been a, a one of the, the most challenging things in their journey that we discussed earlier. That, that hasn't been, um, for me, the most um, challenging aspect. OK, David, you're a GP and uh, a local member of the Liberal National Party in Queensland. Your response? I am, your, your... It seems to me that we're getting away from the foundation of marriage. We're talking about ethnic colouring to marriage, about religious colouring We're talking to about tradition but, and we're talking yeah, about culture. But culture and tradition merely enrich marriage. Marriage, as the great anthropologist Claude Levi-Strauss said, is a social institution on a, on a biological foundation. So society doesn't create marriage. It simply recognises this biological reality, male and female having offspring, and tries to bring some order to bear. Every society has to apply great effort to build up that natural biological bond so that men, feral by nature men, will stick with their mate. And both will stick with the child who typically arises from their union. Because if you don't, you've got chaos. Now, that is the anthropological origin of marriage in every society. Jenny, as an anthropologist, I have to disagree, really, quite frankly. There are many different ways that the different communities have formed families and brought up families and, and had sex, you know, same sex and opposite sex. So, anthropologically, that's a very old fashioned view. Um, but I think the discussion so far is a perfect argument for why we need to abolish marriage as a state institution. <laughs> Seriously, abolish it as a state institution. Institution. Everybody, you know, family. You're not abolish. Up. You're not going to abolish marriage. But, it, I but mean, it's not going to happen. Civil, it's, 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 I, I think it's very it's unlikely civil. it's going to happen in the short, medium, or quite possibly long term. Okay, I mean, up the back. Yes. I think there's another view on the table. The view that sees marriage as between a man and woman is about bringing men and women together to become husband and wife, so they can become father and mother to any kids that they have. Now, not every marriage ends up having kids, but every child born has a mum and a dad. Penny, your response? You're a mum. I don't like the way children get used in this debate. And... That's the consequence of this... Well, this you may laugh, but as a parent, I don't like the way in which some people feel it is permissible to speak about my child in a way that is often denigrating, and that's one of the, I think, really sad things about this debate. Uh, 
whether or not you decide that the that we can get married is not going to prevent same-sex couples having children. We do. We already do. So this coherent it becomes laws that be would stop that. Coherent laws would say that the only heart of the well, debate you, you, you is that a child should have the right. Well, are you saying uh, you there should be laws against sure. gay couples? No, no. They, if, if it's from other marriages and other unions, no. But there should certainly.